Welcome everybody to our team call for June 6th. Uh, today we have a very special guest speaker, but before I get into that, Gabby and I are hosting our next team event on June 17th, guys. The event is up already. You should have all been invited. Get your tickets now. We're going to be breaking down the compensation plan, breaking down how to maximize your volume so you can really get the most out of this business. Because, you know, right, Mindy? Retail commission is cool, but you guys want to be earning the team cycle bonus. You want to help other people get results in their, their business so your business can grow as well. So make sure you get your tickets ASAP, ASAP. Now, without further ado, I want to introduce to you guys Mindy Horde. She is a three-time elite coach. She's a seven-star diamond coach in her first business center, two-star diamond in her second business center. She is a six-figure earner, which means that she's been able to quit her full-time job before and do Beachbody full-time. But most importantly, she's a wife, she's a mom of three, and a stepmom of two. And today, Mindy's going to be talking to us about being vulnerable and transparent in your social media and why it's so important, because it's going to help people trust you, it's going to help people connect with you. And with that, Mindy, take it away. Thank you for having me. I am so excited to be here. Thank you guys for your time, and I hope that I provide some value to you. So a little bit about me. I um, literally stumbled into the coach opportunity uh, back in February of 2012 when I found my coach, Becky, just literally um, on a chance you know, thing on Facebook. Somebody liked her picture. It caught my attention. Um, I stalked her page because her page was public. And that's something that I always, um, you know, I never force issue with coaches, but if your page is not public, that really does hinder your business because a lot of people like to watch you. They're looking for consistency. They're looking for parts about your story and your life that they can connect to. And so with Becky, we definitely, if you knew Becky and you know me, we have totally different stories and different life. A different life but what I saw from her was a mom that was fit and I up until that point at 31 had never met any woman that had children that was fit and in fact actually I didn't know anybody who was actually fit um, besides people who were in school were athletes but um, and in my adult life they didn't so this was like an anomaly to me so I was very intrigued by her story and so this really kind of goes into what the topic I'm going to be talking about, about being transparent, about being vulnerable, about sharing your story, how important it is, because Becky's a shy person. If you actually met her and got to know her, you would realize that she's a very reserved, very shy person. It's very hard for her to share personal things. So she stepped outside of her comfort zone and shared her life and she shared her story. And I stumbled across it and what she spoke to me, even though our lifestyles, our history was not the same, I saw that she had what I wanted. She was a mom who was fit and she was excited about her fitness. I had never been into fitness. I didn't know anything about fitness. And what I was looking for was not an expert, but somebody that could guide me on my journey. She seemed, as, I literally stalked her for about three or four days. It took me to her husband's page and her sister's page which all were completely public. And I saw this, this pattern of consistency of their family, as far as I could scroll on their pictures and their new seat, that they were fitness, but they also lived life. It wasn't all fitness. And so that really drew me to her. So I, you know, reached out to her. I didn't trust her. I, I didn't know her. And honestly, it, we laugh about this now, but if you look at Becky, she was this short, blonde haired, girl but i always remember her that her as was this picture of her and her husband dressed up for halloween halloween is like their favorite holiday and they were dressed up and dressed up as a, a cowboys football player and her as a cow leader she looked like a typical white girl to me like and then um whenever we started talking about like get, getting me started on my journey when we actually talked on the phone she had this cuban accent and i was like oh my god and i was somebody who was literally not not like I didn't trust anybody and I, you know, we always hear about these scams and everybody's like on high alert and I was like, oh my God, in my mind, her voice didn't match what I had put a picture in my head. But, you know, she kept asking questions, kept, you know, reaching out to me and then I was like, well, you know, I asked a ton of questions. Like I probably drove her crazy. Like coming from a coach's side, now I'm looking back, I'm like, she was probably like, who is this chick? She's a stranger. Like I was probably driving her nuts, but she never made me feel bad. Like, and so she reached out to me, you know, when I kind of tried to bail on her and 
she, you know, just encouraged me. And I pulled the trigger, purchased P90X. And most of us think that when that happens, that, you know, the sales done, we got our successful points. But that's really when the work gets started. And she stayed in touch with me. She literally texted me the night that I was going to start my workout to, to ask me how I was doing. Uh, had I gotten everything? Did I have any questions? She, I, I selected P90X because we had a very, very short, you know, uh, or a small availability of what we could get started with. And P90X was some, what I chose. And, um, you know, she reached out to me wanting to know what routine I was starting, if I needed help. Um, and she was just there for me. And she put me in a, P, a, a challenge group. It was on Facebook. Back then, it was just everybody who would ever bought P90X. It really wasn't a challenge group the way we run them nowadays. But that gave me that sense of, like, camaraderie. And then I wasn't alone. She checked in on me there. She was posting stuff. Her and her sister were doing P90X, too. And then fast forward to literally th day 13. I had lost a pant size. I was excited. And like anybody who is excited about anything, they shared on Facebook. I posted a picture real quick saying, oh, my God, I lost a pant size. I can't believe this. And I've been sharing little little tidbits about what I was doing on Facebook from just a customer's point of view. And that's when everybody went crazy because they were like, they watched this girl who was never fit doing stuff, doing stuff, doing stuff. And they were, you know, were, were probably like me thinking like, oh, she's going to quit. You know, number one, she's never been in shape. She's never been one for health. And, you know, everybody I know quits P90X. And so when I reached day 13, and not only was I already way past what anybody I'd ever seen on Facebook do, um, it, it, by being almost to week two, I had results. And then that's when she reached out to me about becoming a coach. I gave her every excuse, time, money, you know, I don't like sales, every excuse out there. And she kind of battled the objections in a non-combative way that made me just kind of rethink about what I was saying and why I was saying no. And um, what was interesting was as soon as I became a coach, it, it, here's the funny thing is she said, you should become a coach. Right before she said that, I didn't even know that coaching was even something that was in the cards. I didn't even understand anything about the coaching opportunity. But immediately I said, no, 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 no. And then as soon as I finally said, okay, I'll try it, got signed up, boom, there I was blowing it up on Facebook, telling everyone I was a coach. And so it just shows you that like literally in like, in 10 seconds, you can change your mind. And most people will say no to something because of lack of information, because they're assuming things, because they're fearful of it. It's not you, it's not even an opportunity, but it's really something inside them. And then also, uh, it's just funny that like, as soon as I made that decision, everything snapped, that fear like just dissipated. And then immediately, immediately, I took my, my profile and made it to public. And I was duplicating what she did already. And so here's the thing is, I hear people who say, I can't get any coaches to sign. I, I can't get coaches to do anything. But here's the thing is, these people have probably been watching you for a long time, regardless if you've had a conversation or not. As long as your, your, your profile is public, they have been watching you for some time. And when they do that, how they get started is how they, what they watched you do. And there's also things that I've realized in my journey that what I share, people assume they have to do. And that a lot of times plays into the reason why they won't become a coach. Um, if I post a picture in my bikini, they're thinking, oh God, never can do that. Close the door on coaching. But I started duplicating what she did. And so I just started sharing my journey. I didn't post exactly the way she posted. I didn't share the exact same thing that she posted, but I just saw that she shared her life. So that's what I started doing. I just started sharing everything about my life. It really was just about little things at the time about, you know, incorporating fitness into my family because I had never been there, my quest to start to learn how to eat healthy, and most of all the progress that I was seeing. And so if you're a coach that's just getting started, I highly recommend you start sharing little tidbits of your story from the very beginning. So many coaches feel that they have to be at this perfect size, perfect weight, perfect, you know, body to be a coach, to be, a, to be an inspiration to somebody. What people want to see is real people struggling. They want to see real people getting re real results. And so that's what I did. I shared my story. I was transparent. I shared when I had fallen off track and I needed to get back. I, I remember being about two thirds of the way through P90X. Becky and her sister, Christina, went and did the P90X certification. And that's when they started to learn a lot about nutrition. We really didn't have a lot of uh, 
help when it came to nutrition um, back then. Like the meal plans were super, super hard to interpret. If you had, you know, P90X or P90X2, super difficult. We didn't have the portion control containers, and you know, most of us were all just learning. So she came back and was telling me, like, you know, you need to really focus on your nutrition. She helped me, and so then that's when I went publicly saying, like, hey, I, I, I want to do this right, and so I may be going backwards, but I'm going to restart my third phase of P90X so I get the great results. And I shared that with them. And these are the things that I shared. And as I completed P90X, as I completed back then Les Mills Pump, as I completed, uh, I think Brazil Buttlift Next and um, oh, uh, Ultimate Reset, with these things, I started to gain confidence. Like when you complete something, like your confidence skyrockets. When you set a goal, whether it's just, I'm going to restart the third phase of P90X and I'm going to do it right, and you do that, you feel amazing. And so th there's this power of setting goals and completing things. Completing things builds confidence because you have progress. And so I, if you're somebody out there saying like, oh my God, I have such a hard time. I have ADD. I'm all over the place. I get it. That's me. I have restarted a million things. I have had way too many irons and way too many fires all at once. And I've just recently been like, Mindy, take a step back. Stop trying to do too many things at once to get you somewhere faster. Just pick one thing and finish it. Because it's one thing that I've learned in this journey is if you just complete some stuff, like you're going to feel amazing. Like, because, you know, for me, I start so many things with the, the intention of what it's going to do for me, for my business, for my family, for my finances, whatever. And then when you don't get it done because you're overwhelmed, then you just think I can never do anything. So if you just tone it down, find something, and this applies to if you picked a program that just isn't like filling your soul, if it's not matching where you're at in your journey, whatever it is that you're struggling with, reevaluate, take a step back. Figure out what you need to do to change it and then commit to it and then share it publicly because that's what people really want to see. They don't want to see you killing yourself doing insanity. If you do, props to you. But they want to see somebody who has struggled, who's trying to find the right thing for them, who has the answers, who understands their struggle. Because trust me, if you if you have like killed insanity and insanity max are back to back, people are going to be like, yeah, yay. But that's not going to be necessarily relatable to the old Mindy's. And so... Don't try to be perfect. Don't try to emulate things that maybe you're seeing top coaches like Melanie Mitro doing, you know, seven years in the business, you're going to be at different stages of your life. She started off just where you did. So you need to be where you're at, love yourself for where you're at in your journey and share it. And so when my confidence grew, then I started doing more things with the business. And I think that, you know, sorry if I'm overstepping my bounds, Audrey, but I feel that lately the biggest problem with coaches is there's so many things out there. There's lots of trainings. There's lots of calls. There's tons of coaches now compared to when I started as a coach five years ago. So it's easy to get sidetracked with them. And like I said, I love Melanie. Like I've watched her grow as a coach. I've been friends with her. I've seen her. But if you're coming in as a newer coach in the last year and you're watching the top coach, it's easy to play that comparison game and get really sidetracked. And so I'm encouraging you to just focus on yourself. Because trust me, where you are was where I was, where Audrey was, where my coach Becky and her sister Christine and all these top level coaches they were, they didn't have anyone to distract them. They didn't have a ton of information. And so if you could just take a step back and focus on your journey, you're going to do the right things. If you're drinking your Shakeology every day, if you're doing your workouts every day, if you're completing them, if you're getting results, if you're, you're going to build confidence and you're going to want to talk about it to people. When you're on your own journey, you're going to have confidence to invite people. I see coaches who are not on their own journey. They started off on their journey. They signed up as a coach because they had great results because they love Shakeology. Then they poured themselves too much into the business, got too overwhelmed, and then they stopped inviting because of the fact that if you're not actually on your own journey, it's kind of hard to invite people. So focus on you because when I did that, I had the confidence to share my own story. When I shared my own story, people actually got inspired by what I was doing. When that happened, I realized that all of those limiting beliefs that I had in the beginning of that I can't inspire anybody, I can't help anybody, I'm not coach material, I haven't done this, I haven't done that, all of those were gone. That I had that. And so when I did that, I felt more inclined to 
pour myself into the business. I started investing more in the business. And I see, I, I, I personally have told my coaches, get on the national wake up call, do personal development, do all this. And I've had to take a really big step back just recently, kind of figuring out like why things aren't working the way they were when I first became a coach. And I realized that my coach just let me work on my transformation. She just let me figure it out on my own. And I, and she encouraged me to just finish a program, do your finish. She is a big on fitness, like finish your finish. She's like, I think she's completed like 20 programs. And, and I will say with the repeats of doing some programs over and over, I've done about 20 programs myself. She's done 20 individual plus maybe some repeats. But that's one thing that she instilled in my head that those are the things that build that confidence. Those are the things that build that reputation. Those are the things that make you inspirational and influential to people. And when you do that, then you want to spend extra time on the business. If you are only going after the business, posting sales stuff, doing all this stuff, mind going, being like mind boggled by every call and every YouTube video and every training that, that seems to pop up in your way. Cause I have coaches who join every training that I have and it's a repeat material and they're pouring all their time and energy into that, not into their fitness, not into their business. Then they're tired at the end of the day. And, I, and I've done this myself. Like I said earlier, I'm notorious for citing it for different things and getting burnt out. And that's why I had to take the step back. But I'm telling you, if you get started, you get committed on a program that fits you, that fits what you're going for, for your own goal, not Audrey's goal, not the top coach's goal, not another coach in your team's goal, not what your husband thinks you should do, your wife thinks you should do, but focus on that. Literally everything will follow. And that's been my mistake with coaches is trying to get them to do too much and not just doing what my coach said and tell them, focus on your journey, focus on your journey. Because when you're falling off track, you're not working out, you're not going to talk about it. So once I started to build that confidence, to build that consistency that I was attracted to with my coach, and then I started pouring myself into the business. So that means around, around six months into consistently doing the you know vital behaviors of sharing my story, drinking my Shakeology, do, doing programs, you know, showing up to events. I then started doing things more regularly because I started to be like, well, I could do this. I got a groove down. I got my fitness down. I got a routine down. So I started listening to the national wake up call. And then I started doing personal development. And that is what changed my life was personal development. I started reading or listening to the series um, from Craig Holiday and I have it all saved. So Audrey, if you don't have access to it, um, I can send it to you guys, but it's a, a series of eight calls um, and it changed my life. Like it changed my life immensely because I was able to like hear these motivational words from a guy that had had failures and had screw ups and everything that I had ever thought about successful people would because I always thought successful people just were born successful and that they that was it I had no idea that success came from people just like me that were struggling and so it, it, it opened up these total new doors for me I listened to these series of eight calls and he started asking these questions that just got my mind going of who I could be and who I can be even despite the things that had happened in the past you know due to my poor mistakes and you know bad decisions and things that were out of my control and that is what changed everything and that's when I started to make the shift that I am invincible i am relentless i am badass i am not the story that i had been telling myself and so those were the things that allowed me to be transparent i then went to my first live personal development seminar danny johnson i don't know if any of you know her um she was kind of like my gateway into the personal development world and i went thinking it was some business thing i, I, I don't even i it hit me right between the eyes because I didn't even know what I was going to. So if you can ever get to a personal development seminar close to your area, um, I don't know. I think you guys are Northeast, if I'm right. I think most of you guys are. Um, there's like a Tony Robbins coming up in um, July, right after Summit that my husband's going to. So if you're not going to Summit, go to that. Um, but it literally changed everything. I saw this woman who was a total mess who had turned into be an amazing powerful, empowering woman, wife, mother, everything. And that gave me hope. I was able to learn at this two day seminar about how to let go, how to forgive, how, how, how to sell by 
loving on people, how forming relationships was life and that you needed to learn that whether you were in network marketing, whether you were with Beachbody or another company, you needed to, to build relationships with people and you needed to start with yourself. And so that was everything. And so for me, there's, I am a very open person on social media, like seriously, super open. I've been married three times. I've had you know, major issues with infidelity. I um, became promiscuous. Uh, I had lots of drugs and alcohol addictions at a young age. I've been sober now for 18 months, but uh, I've had marital problems along the way. I was, I voluntarily uh, put myself into a mental health facility back in 2015 when I had a major um, issue and my husband and I were separated. I was doing a lot of mental illness. I put my whole life on blast and people are always like, I can't, even fathom doing that. And so I want to share with you that you don't have to do that. Like that you don't have to do that. But I also want to share with you that I never intended to share that part of my life that literally prior to becoming a coach, like I literally had like a long list of people blocked and I really wasn't living that interesting of a life, but I was so scared of being judged. I was so worried that people were going to hurt me, that they were going to take things away from me. And I lived a life in fear. It was doing the programs that gave me the confidence that I didn't need the approval of anybody else. It was the personal development that I, that I invested in because of the workout programs. The workout programs made me realize that I had value and that I was deserving. And so then I started to invest in myself when it came to personal development. And then when those investments that I made in myself with personal development paid dividends, then I started sharing it. Then once I accepted my laws, once I accepted who I was, once I forgave myself and anybody who would ever hurt me, mostly myself, then I was able to move forward. And then I wanted to share my life with people and tell them that it came because of Beachbody. It came because the stranger believed in me. It came because the stranger pushed me to get results because, because I came to her looking for results. She pushed me to get I paid for and she never left my side like I literally just spent a week with her in Miami like she did what her what her job was as a coach then I have gotten my money's worth and then some that come from emotional and mental breakthroughs which allow me to share with people so if you're thinking like oh my god you you know Mindy just shared all this crazy stuff about her life that I would never share or maybe have some of the same stories and you were like oh my god I would never share that understand that it was a process that it's happened over time and that it all came from fitness like if i hadn't have finished that fitness program if i hadn't have had somebody who believed in me i would have never gotten to the point where i learned that i was valuable and that i was worth the investment and that it was so much more than just getting physical results and that i could go further and so when I get fired up about beach body, when I see other coaches are fired up about beach body, and you know, some coaches are like, I just don't get what they're doing. It's because you haven't drank the Kool-Aid. It's because you haven't really went all in. And when I say all in, it needs to start with your fitness. And then after that, it all follows. Some people just want to all, 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 all at once. But I'm going to tell you, it does take patience with every part of this business because it goes in waves. And I wouldn't want all of this to happen to you overnight because you really wouldn't appreciate it. And you wouldn't be able to enjoy all the amazing things that happen along the way, the ups, the downs, the self-discoveries, the relationships that are made, the relationships that you may wash yourself clean up along the way. But being transparent, being vulnerable, it, it gives you this feeling of like pride and accomplishment. Uh, it, it becomes addicting to do that. And it becomes like, it feels good to just wash yourself from any like self-loathing that you have and to be able to help other people. And also when you're open and vulnerable about these things, number one, people trust you. Because if you're willing to put your life on blast, if you're willing to be out there open to criticism, which I'll tell you, when you're that open about stuff, people don't have the guts to say anything to you. Like I have been like ridiculously open about some shameful, low down, dirty, icky stuff that I have done in the past and not one person, not even one person that had anything to do with me in my past has ever said anything. Because you know what, when you feel secure about who you are and what you did and you own up to yourself, people can't say anything. But it's brought people into my life that I can help and other people who've been further along in their journey that I've connected to where I realized that I don't feel bad about the stuff I did anymore. I feel bad about people I hurt, but I went through, apologized to them, 
dealt with those issues. And I realize now I'm not alone. And that's the biggest thing about Beach Body is that we have this community of people that all are striving for something better. We all have our different stories, our different goals, our different struggles. We're all striving for something better. But most people who are not part of a community, who don't open up, who aren't vulnerable, who don't talk to people, who don't seek out accountability, don't seek out support for anything, they just stay in their head. And your head can tell you some ugly things. And people who do that never move past their problems because they're only battling an issue by themselves. And it's your old brain talking to you who's trying to merge into something else. It's not until you have that support from other people who get it or who've been there. And it's just the same thing. Like when Becky put me in the P90X challenge group, there were people who got started after me who were right, right around that same week with me. And there were people who were a month ahead of me. And that just always gave me the, the courage, the faith that I could get further. And it was the same thing about my life. And I, I owe all of this because of fitness. And so, you know, if you're not doing your workouts, if you're not committed if you're not doing if you're spreading yourself too thin on other things you're not going to get these results you're not going to ever get to that point where you're happy with who you are and you accept your, yourself who you, for who you are and i i dare say that all of us don't have room for improvement and that you may have came to whoever your coach is looking for results when it came to physical stuff but there's really some down things in you that wants to be changed or wants to be healed. And so start with fitness because that will give you that, that feeling that you are deserving and that you are valuable. That's all I had to have. That was so powerful. I thank you so much for sharing all of that. And I have to say, I love as, as you were talking, because the message I really heard is just be true to yourself. You know, like you said, you, you nailed it in the head. Like this, this business is about fitness and focusing on your own journey and being true to that journey. And it reminded me of my son. This is something that I was actually going to post tonight. My son is, takes martial arts classes. And I remember one day I took him in and he was doing these bear crawls. It was like races with two other kids, like two other teams. And I'm like, oh, he's going to nail it because I see him do bear crawls all the time. And he's so fast with them. But what happened was, is when the sensei yelled, go, he started looking at the other kids and where the other kids were. And it completely took him off his, his journey. And thank you for telling everybody to focus on yourself and don't look at the other top coaches. You can't compare yourself to where they are, because I think that that's something that we definitely do. You know, we look at everybody else and we think we got to be like that. We have to, our journey is supposed to look like that. And it takes our goal away for our eyes away from our own goal and being true to ourselves and our story. And we completely miss the opportunity to authentically connect with other people that need to hear what we are going through. Like now, like, I, you know, early on, I just unfollowed all the coaches I used to follow. And now I'm only friends with people that I'm actually friends with. Does anybody have any questions for Mindy? So much great feedback in the chat. Thank you for your passion. I, I could hear it the moment that you got turned on and you just started speaking from the heart instead of just sharing your story. It's incredible what this business does. Do you guys have any questions for Mindy? I'm an open book. Yeah. Living your truth. This is my mantra. Well, how did I overcome all of that? You know, <laughs> I won't say I overcame it all. I will say that I have stopped living my life based on a story that was formed years ago or things that happened a long time ago. And I have to fight it daily. Um, you know, there's times where I'm like, oh my God, I, I would love drugs and alcohol. I'm not, I'm not even gonna lie. There's times that I feel that way. But I also remember why I got started and like that, that was like the old Mindy. And I, you know, and I think that so many people are looking for this like answer and the solution that's going to free them from all the pain that they've ever felt. And it's something they need to constantly fight. But once <laughs> I'll just circle it back to fitness, like 
when I finished P90X. I'm like, I realized I can do anything, you know? And that's stupid because I've done so many other, other amazing things, you know, before that, but that gave me that confidence where I'm like, now I can do anything. And I've completed so many different things that I'm like, I, I can do anything. Like, and now I really, I'm in the shift shop uh, test group and we're on round two. And it was round three or the third week when my uh, coach Becky and I were in Orlando. We were staying at this hotel. It was super hot and humid. It, like literally at six o'clock in the morning, it was ridiculously hot. Um, and we were like just killing it, man. It was like a 45 minute workout. We hadn't had any carbs because if you followed the shift shop, week three, no carbs. But we were fine. And leading up to that, we were like, oh my God, how are we going to live with this? And then I realized I'm like, we were going on four hours of sleep. It was like, it felt like a hundred degrees out there and I live in Texas where it's humid. So like it was ridiculously hot. I was wearing tennis shoes, which I always work out barefoot. My feet were killing me. The workout was tough. We were on concrete. I mean, all these variables. And then I had this like moment. I'm like, I can do anything. Like I can do anything. I finished so many things. I beat so many things. I had a baby that like took 24 hours to pop out. She was nine pounds. I was 18 years old. I went through all that. Like we can, we can do hard things. Y'all, all of you have done something really hard. You are still here to live to tell about it. And so it's a story that we tell ourselves that like, oh, I can't do that. Bro, you could do anything that you want because you've done it once or twice. Like people have that, you know, like they have motivation, they have that relentless spirit, they have this and that, they just pick and choose where they want to use it. Like sometimes you just, you know, there's that saying that, you know, I didn't know how strong I was till there was no choice. I mean, like literally when I was popping out a nine pound kid at 18 all by myself with no pain meds, I didn't really have a choice. Mm -hmm. But there's other times where you're like, ah, oh, peanut and yanks is hard. Um, I'm, I'm just going to not do it. That's a choice. But the thing is you had that same thing because you got through it. Like with Having my daughter, I thought I was going to die. Whenever I hospitalized myself in 2015, I literally wanted to kill myself. I've dealt with suicidal thoughts since I was a child. I, I had those thoughts, but I didn't do it. I kept going because I've always had that strength. And all of you have that strength. Like literally all of you have that strength. I don't even need to know your story to know that you've been through some crap that has taken like everything in your body to get through and you've made it through it. And so, you know, there is no overcoming it. And I honestly don't ever want anybody to, to ever overcome things all the way because when you do that and then you feel like I got this, that's usually when people go backwards It's because they forgot where they came from. They forgot the pain. They forgot the hard work they got there. So you see things as like fuel. You have that ability to let it defeat you or you have that ability to let it fuel you. So move forward. Like, you know, you can do it and, you know, Sharing with other people and hearing their stories, because trust me, I, I literally for years thought it was only me. I thought that like, oh, I got adopted to this really bad family. You know, it just poor me, poor me. Man, I have, a, I have connected with so many other Korean adoptees about the same story. I've, I've like, like connected with people who weren't adopted, who came from great families, who have the same issues. The thing is, our stories really aren't that unique. Our stories and our pain really isn't that special. It's universal. And so when you have the ability and you know you feel comfortable to open up to whatever it is that you feel so shameful about or guilty about, you're going to find that there's so many people that are going to be put in your path that are there to help you through it or to go through it with you and you are not alone. And so, you know, for me, that's, you know, I didn't really overcome it. I've just learned to embrace it instead of trying to push away my story. I learned to just embrace it and make it mine and use my pain and my struggles as a story and a, a selling point and a, a, a lesson to people instead of using it as a crutch to just keep being mediocre or keep being angry or keep being, you know, labeling myself as broken. Hope that answered your question. Amen to that. And you take ownership of it. So it doesn't own you, you're owning it. And also you're able to inspire other people that feel alone. I think there's a question. Oh, said, have I balanced my personal hurt hurdles with building a coaching business? So yes, I have. Um, I don't accept coach friend requests because I'm like, I keep getting maxed out and on it, but you can always follow me. But I have a album that it was like, I don't know if it's called Mindy Gets Her Shit Together. I don't know. But it's like this huge album that actually literally shares like 
what happened when my husband and I separated all throughout my hospitalization, all through our getting back together, that my therapy, I'm all me getting sober. And so you can see how I shared my story. I, I mean, it, there's literally like hundreds of pictures in there now. It's been like 18 months, but like I did share it. Like I shared it when we were separated. I didn't tell anybody until I figured it out because I had a huge following. I had kids that were on Facebook that needed to be respected. So we figured out what we were doing. But once we kind of made our decision to open up the world, we went about it very tactfully. Um, and then we just shared the story along the way. So people felt our pain. They clapped for us and cheered for us when we were progressing. They mourned for us whenever, you know, they thought we weren't getting back together. But that really is something that's completely a personal thing. I know a lot of coaches who have had marital issues or family issues or deaths in the family and they've chosen to be silent about it. So that's not something that I think there's black and white you should do, you have to do. But for me, I decided to do that and I don't have a lot of family or a lot of local friends. Um, so it was therapy to be able to open up and talk about it. Um, my husband and I split up, I ended up getting like 600 messages um, in like a two weeks time span of people pouring out stories about their their life. And so that gave me a lot of, str of strength. So th that was just how I balanced it out. That's incredible because it's, you know, we're so scared of those things. We always want to put out the best version of ourselves out on social media, but we do an injustice to ourselves and to others when we only do that. All right, Mindy, thank you so much. Uh, this was really powerful. Thank you for opening up tonight and speaking to my team. I'm sure that they're, you know, they're taking it to heart and it's going to change things a little bit for them with their social so. media. Yeah, definitely. Thank you for having me. Thank you, and see you at Summit. Yes. Thank you. See y'all. Bye.